This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service that screens a variety of interesting and amazing films from around the world. Get a free month at mubi.com slash indepthcine. For anyone who wants to take photography or cinematography more seriously, the first step is to distance yourself from the dreaded auto setting on the camera, move the knob over to manual and start to understand the basic camera variables or settings that change the way that an image is captured. Professional image makers choose to manually manipulate these settings to maintain complete control over how an image looks and not leave those creative decisions down to the whims of automatic camera software. In this video, I'll examine six of the most important camera variables that can be changed. These settings affect the image in different ways and can be placed into three separate categories. Exposure settings, color settings, and motion settings. These six variables have both technical value that can be used to control how an image looks and also have creative value that changes the effect, mood or feeling of an image. Exposure refers to how dark or light an image is. This is determined by the amount of light that goes through the camera's lens and hits the sensor of the camera where the image is recorded. A dark image with too little light is underexposed, a bright image with too much light is overexposed, and an image with enough light is evenly exposed. A camera has four variables that can be changed to alter its exposure. EI, shutter angle, aperture, and by using neutral density filters. Let's start with the EI or exposure index setting, a good base setting to start with. This can be referred to using different metrics such as ISO, ASA, gain or EI depending on the camera, but the concept is the same. It's a measurement of a film or a camera sensor's sensitivity to light. The lower the value, the less sensitive it is to light and the darker an image will be. Raising this value means the sensor is more sensitive to light and the brightness of an image will increase. Most professional digital cinema cameras have what is called a base or native EI setting where the sensor performs best and has the most dynamic range and lowest noise. For example, the Alexa sensor has a native EI of 800. While EI can be changed on digital cameras, when using film, its speed or sensitivity to light is set at a fixed level, such as 50 ASA and cannot be altered without changing to a different kind of film stock. The next exposure setting we can manipulate is the shutter angle or shutter speed. A shutter is a solid layer in front of the sensor that opens and closes rapidly. When it opens, it lets in light. When it closes, it blocks light. The longer the shutter is open for, the more light it lets in and the brighter an image is while the shorter the shutter remains open, the less light it lets in and the darker in images. Cinema cameras use shutter angle and show a measurement in degrees. A large shutter angle means that more degrees of the circular shutter is open and more light is let in, while a smaller shutter angle with a smaller opening lets in less light. Consumer or still photography cameras use shutter speed that shows this metric in fractions, such as 1 50th of a second, a measurement of how long the shutter is open for. So fractions such as 1 2 50th of a second means that the shutter is open for a shorter time and that less light is let in, whereas fractions such as 1 25th of a second means the shutter is open for longer, which lets in more light, resulting in a brighter image. With these two settings done, we now move to the lens where we can set the aperture, iris or stop. This is the size of the hole at the back of the lens that allows light to pass through it. Iris blades can either be expanded to open up the hole and let in more light or contracted to make the hole that light passes through smaller. On cinema lenses, this is done manually by adjusting the barrel of the lens and on modern digital stills cameras, this is usually adjusted via a button or scroll wheel on the camera, which changes the iris of the lens internally. 
The aperture is either measured as a T-stop on cinema lenses or as an F-stop on stills lenses. Whatever measurement is used, the lower the stop number, the more light will be let through and the brighter an image will be. So a lens with a stop of T2 has a large aperture opening and will let in more light, while a lens with a stop of T8 has a smaller opening and will let in less light. These three settings, ISO, shutter speed and aperture, are foundational to exposing footage and are called the exposure triangle. In photography, these three settings are regularly adjusted individually to find the right exposure. However, in cinematography, more often than not, these settings are made up front and only tweaked for their photographic effect. For example, in cinema, usually the ISO will be set to its native level, such as 800. The shutter will be set to 180 degrees or 1 50th of a second to ensure motion or movement feels normal. Then the stop of the lens will be set depending on how much of the background the cinematographer wants in focus. Opening up the aperture to a low number like T1.3 means a shallow depth of field with much of the image out of focus, whereas stopping down to about T8 will mean more of the image is in focus. So if this is the case, then how else do cinematographers adjust the brightness of an image? They do it by manipulating the strength of the lighting and with the fourth exposure variable, neutral density or ND filters. These are pieces of darkened glass that can be put in front of the sensor or lens that decreases the amount of light that is let in without affecting the color or characteristics of the image. In film, a number is ascribed to a filter to show how many stops of light it blocks. Each stop is represented by 0.3. So ND 0.3 means one stop of light is blocked and ND 0.9 takes away three stops of light. Many modern cinema cameras have ND filters built into the camera, which can be adjusted internally via a setting. ND filters can also be used as physical glass filters that are mounted onto the front of the lens using a tray in a matte box or a screw-in filter on still lenses. Now that we know the four variable settings that can be used to adjust the brightness of an image in camera, let's look at another very important setting related to color, white balance. White balance or color temperature is measured in Kelvin and changes how warm or cool an image looks. The two most common white balance settings are 3200 Kelvin or tungsten and 5600 Kelvin or daylight. This is because when you set the camera's white balance to 3200 Kelvin and light an actor with a warmer tungsten light, the color will appear neutral, not overly cool or warm. Likewise, when you set the camera to 5600 Kelvin and shoot with a cooler daylight fixture or outside in natural sunlight, the image will also appear neutral. This means that the lower you set the Kelvin value of the white balance, the cooler an image will appear. So if you shoot outside in natural sunlight and set the camera to 3200 Kelvin, then the image will be blue. Inversely, if you shoot in tungsten light with a color temperature of 5600, then the image will be warm. As well as having these two preset color temperatures, most modern cameras also allow you to pick from a range of color temperatures on the Kelvin scale and even have an auto white balance setting which automatically picks a Kelvin value to give the image a neutral color balance. It should be noted that like with EI, when shooting on film, the color temperature is fixed to either daylight or tungsten and cannot be changed without using a different film stock. Finally, let's take a look at a camera setting that only applies to moving images, frame rate. To understand what frame rate is, we need to think of film not as a video clip, but rather as a series of individual images. When shooting on film, 24 still pictures are captured every second. Each of these pictures is called a frame. To create the illusion of a moving image, these pictures are then projected back at a speed of 24 frames per second. You can think of it kind of like leafing through still images in a flipbook, 
at a speed of 24 pages every second. Therefore, recording a frame rate of 24 or 25 frames per second with a camera produces the illusion of motion at a speed which is the same as that which we experience in real life. Frame rate can also be used to exaggerate motion for effect by keeping the same playback base frame rate of 24 frames per second and adjusting the frame rate setting that the camera captures. For example, if we want slow motion, we can set the camera to record 48 frames per second and then play it back at 24 frames per second. This results in twice as many frames and therefore a feeling of motion that is half as slow as that of real life. Something important to note is that the frame rate also affects exposure. Doubling the frame rate, for example from 24 to 48 frames per second, means that the camera will lose a stop of light and will therefore be darker. So there we go, EI, shutter angle, aperture, ND, white balance and frame rate. Six camera variables that every photographer or cinematographer needs to know. If this all seems like too much technical information, the easiest way to practically get this information in your head is to find a digital camera and start experimenting with settings by shooting. The more you practice with a camera, the more all of this information will start to become second nature until you get to a point where you can manipulate all of these settings unconsciously to capture that imaginative image that you see in your head. I'd like to say a special thanks to the sponsor of this video, Mubi. Mubi is a curated streaming service where you can watch a rotating selection of lots of interesting cinema, something that I personally love doing. I'm sure you do too. The reason I like Mubi is that they feature critically acclaimed movies on their site that I'm not always familiar with, that aren't usually available on other streaming sites and can be tricky to find elsewhere. The articles in their notebook section also provide interesting insights into a bunch of films, directors and current movie news. Their curators hand select each film that is streamed and premiere a new movie every day, which makes it feel kind of like you're attending a film festival from the comfort of your own couch. I also love that when you browse through films they include information about awards it received, show the cast and crew members that worked on it, link their other work and include reviews from critics and users. I recently watched On the Road which was adapted from the iconic Jack Kerouac novel of the same name and features a bit of an all-star cast. It made its premiere at Cannes where it competed for the Palme d'Or. So if you're into cinema and watching an interesting mix of hand-picked films like I am, then I highly recommend checking out Mubi. You can try Mubi free for 30 days at mubi.com slash indepthcine. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash indepthcine for a whole month of great cinema for free. Thanks everyone for watching, liking or otherwise engaging with the video and a special thanks to all the patrons who continue to support the channel and get these YouTube videos early and ad free. Otherwise until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.